Hey everyone, this video is the second part of the demonstration problem of Williams, Haka, Bettner and Meeks, chapter 12, demonstration problem. Uh, in the first part, we did the general entries for stock split as stock split and treasury stocks. In the second part, we'll do the remaining general entries. On December 1st, the company did another transaction. Uh, they declared that a dividend of $1 per share will be paid. This is the declaration. The payable date is December 30th. So on December 1st, what is happening is, first we have to see how many shares are outstanding. Now, after the split, after the split, we know 50,000 shares were outstanding. The 40,000 that turned into 50,000 is the same thing. Those people who held those 40,000 now hold 50,000 shares at the same value of the same capital. So these 50,000 shares were held for the entire year, for the entire period until the stock split. Now shares bought back. 2,000 shares were bought back, of which 1,000 were again reissued, and 20,000 new shares were issued. So the shares outstanding at the end of the year, we start with the 50,000 that we had at the start, plus uh, from this, 2,000 were reclaimed, or uh, we got them back. So at that point, only 48,000 shares remained in the market. After that, we sold 1,000 back into the market. So now 49,000 shares are in the market. And then we also sold another 20,000 shares in the market. So that's a total of 69,000 shares that was sold in the market. And at the end of the year, 69,000 shares are in the market. Now, the company said that they will pay a dividend of $1 per share. So a dividend of $1 per share is a total of dividend of 69,000. So the entry on December 1st, when the dividend is not paid, just declared, the entry will be a dividend of 69,000 to dividend payable of 69,000. Once you have this, then you have to look at the dividend payable. Uh, on December 30th, the company will pay this dividend. So at that time, it will reduce its liability by 69,000 and pay out cash. However, there's an important thing over here. This entry should not be a part of the schedule, the general entry, when you're talking about equity. This entry is for a liability. Dividend payable is a liability. It is not an equity item. And then we have on December 22, the company issued a stock dividend, 10% stock dividend. <clears throat> and the stock dividend would be paid next year and on January 15th. So when the company issued a stock dividend, the total number of shares outstanding at the end of the year, we have just calculated there are 69,000 shares outstanding at the end of the year. Of these stock 69%, if you give a stock dividend of 10%, 10% uh, into 69,000 shares, it's 6,900 shares. So the number of shares for stock dividend that the company is going to give is 6,900. When the stock dividend was declared, the market price was 48. And the par value of all these shares is eight. So the additional paid in capital is 48 minus eight is $40. The value of the stock dividend, uh, value how much worth did the stock dividend have? is 48 times 6,900 or 331,200. The stock dividends to be distributed. Now this is like the common stock, uh, the par value. So the par value eight into 6,900 
is 55,200. Now, we, this is with regards to par value. Additional paid in capital is with regards to the extra money. So 40 times of 6,900 is 276,000. Now, stock dividends directly reduces retained earnings. So whatever the value of stock dividend given, that will be the value through which your retained earnings will reduce. So, so 331,200 is the reduction in retained earnings. So the entry will be debit retained earnings, the reduction in retained earnings of 331,200. Stock dividends to be distributed will be of 55,200. And the additional paid in capital is of 276,000. Again, since the stock dividends is, are not distributed in this year, the entry of distribution will not be passed in this journal, this uh, calendar uh, journal ledger. It will be passed on January 15. However, for completeness and for you to understand what the entry will be, the entry will be debit stock dividends to credit common stock. At that time, you will use this par value value of 55,200 to reduce the stock dividend to be distributed and increase the common stock by 55,200. Okay. Every year, at the end of the year, the company has to close its account. What this means is it transfers three things into retained earnings. The first is the income, net income. The second is the dividends. When you transfer net income and dividends, you also transfer all your revenues and your expenses to your uh, retained earnings statement because uh, the net income is revenue minus expenses. So at the end of the year, two accounts that also affect retained earnings, retained earnings is a part of equity. So these accounts will also be affected is first the income summary amount count. Uh, what you have to do is, so the, the company has a net income of 173,000. At the end of the year, this 173,000 will be transferred from uh, income, net income, and it will be used to increase the retained earnings. <clears throat> so the entry will be debit income summary credit retained earnings. Similarly, uh, for dividends, the company has how much total dividends? A cash dividend of a cash dividend uh, and a stock dividend, but the stock dividend will not be used to make re adjust any adjustment in the income summary for the primary reason that stock dividend has originally been at the start being directly uh, put off against retained earnings. So you cannot put it off to, uh, two times. You, since stock dividends were already netted against retained earnings, you only have to uh, close the cash dividends account. So the cash dividends of the company were 69,000. So debit retained earnings of 69,000, credit dividends of 69,000. So now we have in our general ledger all the entries that the company would prepare with regards to the first uh, this year. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.